Welcome to the University of Maastricht program on the reform of international investment law. I am Nicolas Sadler. According to critics, the investment system departs from the rule of law. That's considered by lawyers either as a value, a concept, or even a principle. Although there is much consensus about the virtues of the rule of law, there is dissensus regarding its meaning. It's my pleasure to interview today Ivan Adamianovich, who is a specialist of this legal discipline and who recently published a book on the European Union and the reform of international investment law. Welcome to this program, Ivan Adamianovich. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, I would like to ask you um, to define uh, this concept or this value, the famous rule of law, please. The rule of law is the cornerstone of every legal system. It ensures that law prevails over politics. And this in particular comes in plan when we are talking about the protection of rights of citizens. So there are different aspects of the rule of law which ensure that those rights are protected against arbitrary interference of state into people's rights. So on the one hand we are talking about the formal characteristics of laws so that laws equally apply to everyone including the government that they are precise, specific, prospective and so on. And on the other hand we are also talking about the protection of rights before independent and impartial courts who are open to the public. The rule of law entails effective judicial protections. It requires independent and impartial jurisdictions reviewing the actions of the government. The rule of law requires independent decision makers. But then the core question is independence for whom and independence from who? So in the context of investment treaty arbitration, from the investor's point of view, it is exactly the neutral forum and independence from host state which ensures the rule of law. However, the critics can argue that the whole system bypass public courts, domestic courts. Yes, indeed, because as we already talked about, investment treaty arbitration is in a way independent from domestic courts and domestic law. According to the case law of the Human Rights Court as well as the Court of Justice of the European Union, uh, justice must be not only independent objectively but it must also from a subjective point of view be perceived as independent. Justice must be done and not only that it must be seen to be done. So when we talk about investment treaty arbitration, the problem, if you like, uh, that creates this perception of bias is party autonomy. So of course, if a party has uh, an opportunity to se select their ar arbitrator, then there is a perception that they're going to select the one that is going to rule in their favor. And how uh, the parties can um, overcome these hurdles of course, the independence of arbitrators is being subject to multilateral uh, reform uh, of ISDS in UNCITRAL. So on the one hand, there is the idea to have a more robust code of conduct for arbitrators. The question is whether that really addresses the perception of bias. Um, but the EU proposal goes even further. Uh, and it wishes to establish a multilateral investment court with judges that would be independent, permanent in a way, and uh, elected for a certain period of time. Somewhat getting closer to a domestic court structure. Yes, or at least an international court structure. I see. The rule of law entails predictability and consistent implementation of the legislation. As we discussed previously, the rather vague frame rights conferred to investors grant some leeway, some discretion to the arbitral tribunals. 
Indeed. So one way of enhancing the rule of law is addressing this formal legality ex ante, so looking at the formal characteristics of international investment agreements, making these provisions more specific, reflecting more public-private balance in a way ensuring that the states are the ones that decide what the law in international investment law should be mm -hmm. and that the tribunals only implement and decide what the law is in each particular case. Fair enough. There is an issue of consistency. And as we already discussed, uh, it appears that the case law is not always uh, extremely uh, very consistent. Indeed, and that is one of the key concerns in the multilateral ISDS reform in UNCITRAL. So one idea of addressing that inconsistency is through the establishment of an appellate mechanism, for example. On another note, one of the main general principles of law related to the rule of law is the principle of equality and non-discrimination. Uh, that being said, uh, investment structure provides for reverse discrimination. In other words, domestic investors cannot initiate proceeding before the international tribunals. Only the foreign investors can avail themselves of these procedural rights. Indeed, there is, in a way, reverse discrimination. That this is not going to be addressed by this multilateral reform. The system will continue to exist as a system for protection of foreign investors. What the reform is trying to do is addressing different situations when investors might abuse the system, so eliminating frivolous claims, uh, eliminating parallel proceedings, and so on. So there is no willingness to uh, get rid of reverse discrimination to the best of my understanding. The system is about protecting foreign investors, not domestic investors, and these protections remain to be seen as important in promoting investment flows. International investment law is characterized by an asymmetrical claim structure. It has been argued that it favors an expensive interpretation of the jurisdiction of these tribunals. Well, multilateral investment reform is looking to address some of these aspects of jurisdictions in terms of limiting it, but the asymmetrical claim structure will remain the feature of the system. Indeed, the investment treaty arbitration will continue to have its basis in a number of international investment agreements that are already in force, these over 2,000 treaties. And the EU proposal for a multilateral investment court envisages the possibilities of counterclaims by states, but nevertheless, that will depend on a particular international investment agreement in question. So far we discussed investors' rights. What about their obligations? Unfortunately, the system will remain asymmetrical in that aspect as well. So investors are expected to comply with their obligations under domestic law. We know that investments can adversely affect local communities. However, there is no avenue for these local communities to challenge investors before specific tribunals. Yes, they can only lodge their claim before the domestic jurisdictions. Yes, which then decides these claims according to domestic law, not international law. Finally, there is also a requirement of transparency and openness. Public open court amounts to accountability in the context of the rule of law. Well, because arbitration is a private law dispute settlement mechanism, the emphasis has always been on confidentiality. Only recently we do see shift towards more transparency, which is still controlled by the parties. Can you give me a concrete example? So we see more and more awards being published. We also see the uh, possibility for third parties to submit amicus curiae, uh, in certain contexts, we also see the push towards open, transparent proceedings.
taking everything into consideration, how likely it is that this multilateral reform will enhance the rule of law? Well, we could say that actually there are different visions of the rule of law in international investment law. One vision accepts that arbitration should remain the dominant dispute resolution mm -hmm. method in mm -hmm. for the settlement of investment disputes. And that vision focuses on the advantages of arbitration, so flexibility, efficiency, and in particularly emphasizes this neutral forum for the settlement of disputes and the mechanism for enforcement of awards. So the, the focus is on enforcement. Given that there are other views, what's the vision of the European Union on the matter? So the EU's vision of the rule of law in international investment law envisages shift from arbitration as a private law dispute resolution mechanism towards a court as a public law dispute resolution mechanism. Can you be a bit, a bit more concrete? So previously we talked about intra-EU investment and we said that the EU has made an effort to eliminate ISDS in relations between mm -hmm. the member states. So ISDS there is to be replaced by domestic courts mm -hmm. and by the Court of Justice of the European Union. Mm -hmm. So the vision is that this will enhance domestic rule of law. If we look at external picture, external relations, the EU wants to introduce, establish a multilateral investment court which would more resemble an international court rather than arbitration. It seems to me that this multilateral reform is an extremely time-consuming process. It's going to take years. What are the main obstacles faced by the negotiators? The main problem, if you like, of this reform is its focus on procedural aspects of international investment law, so on ISDS. And this is unlikely to lead to more substantive and deeper changes of the system. If the, inter the multilateral investment court is eventually established, uh, this might lead to some new interpretative methods which could lead to new interpretations of investment standards. But this is, of course, uh, to be seen and it will also depend on the new judges. What the reform will likely do is to shift power from arbitral institutions, arbitral tribunals towards states. Thank you very much indeed, Ivan Adamianovich, to take part in this discussion about the rule of law and instrument investment law. Interview that took place in the Dominican Church in Maastricht. And hopefully this interview will entice the viewers to have a fresh look at this critical issues.